Good day everyone. So I am Crystal May Isabuyo and I will be the one to report the student lead learning or also called peer lead learning. So it is where students facilitate their learning, often by students in the year above guiding students with their peers and solve problems. So the concept of student lead learning has gained pace over for the past couple of years. So nagsilbi siya ng isa ka improvement or step as we all know that in the 20th century, we are in the state of teacher-centered. A traditional classroom setup where students are only passive and naatana ng atensyon sa teacher. Siya lang mismo ang mag-provide sa mga instruction and such information. So with this type of learning, more engagements of students are seen, helping each other and sharing their own ideas. So student-lead learning can also be known as cooperative learning. So when we say cooperative learning, the teacher put the students in a small group to do an activity together. So the students will take the lead in making the activities and the teacher only provides guidance as needed. So the teacher does not put the same students for each activity, but changes groupings. So there will be no bias in terms of choosing such members. So in that way, students will learn in a variety of partners. So the common question is, how students will be grouped? So the first thing to consider when grouping the students are their academic abilities and test scores. So consider grouping students by their performance level. Homogeneous grouping students with similar performance level. And organize students by ability levels. Next is heterogeneous groupings where diverse students are placed in different classrooms so that they can apply their skills and abilities more evenly with their companions. So for example of those heterogeneous groupings are those that have learning disabilities and those students who are gifted. Safety is always the number one priority and to prevent such bullying situations. Therefore, consider grouping students with harmonious and safe environment. Another possibility of grouping students is a random approach. In that case, there is no particular rhyme or reason for placing any students in a group as opposed in placing them in another group. Random grouping are sometimes used when teachers are looking to shake things up. When students are grouped together, things can get out of control pretty quickly. So to keep it order, assign the students with their specific groups. Always remember that the best grouping scenario is where students are both safe and learn. So why use cooperative learning? So this method helps the students to learn about sharing, getting along with others, and working together. Cooperative learning is a great strategy. It is because it is all about the students with their own thoughts and ideas. The students are actually the center of learning, not the teacher. As a teacher, he or she has the responsibility to prepare students for more career which happen to require people to work in group with other people. So cooperative learning is a key component of 21st century life skills. Ultimately, we are smarter together as a group. It is because different perspectives and ideas are come up in each individual. Take note that there are different strategies, activities, or lessons when it comes to cooperative learning. So the first activity or strategies that I will be discuss is Think, Think, Pair, Share. So this strategy can be used every time and in a different kinds of things. Students are given a question to work on and then they are going to group by pairs. Once grouped, they can compare their answers and discuss their different perspectives. Sometimes they are asked with a single answer and share it with the entire class. So like for example, the teacher decides or talk about the mental health. So the teacher asks, what is mental health? How can you define mental health awareness? He or she will be given a set of time to think by themselves what does it mean for them and ask those ideas with their partners or pairs. So that was the think part. So for the pair part, they need to turn into the person beside them, then have a little discussion. After a couple of minutes, the teacher will ask those questions and will definitely answer it by everyone. At this strategy, students will be felt safe, will I feel out of place or centered out. It is because the teacher are given 
enough time for them to think and all of them have an opportunity to share their own thoughts. Next strategy is Jigsaw Method. So what is Jigsaw Method? It is developed by Elliot Aronson in 1971. It is a cooperative learning where each student in a group takes responsibility for one topic. And that particular topic is ilahan na siyang itudlo sa another grupo. Like the pieces of jigsaw puzzle, students fit their individual topic to form a complete body of knowledge. So there are steps that we need to follow in this jigsaw puzzle. Step 1. Divide students into group of 4 to 6 people per group. So, mas maayo na each team of a group consists of the same numbers of members. So, for example, na I 40 students. So, divided by 8, so it consists of 5 members per group. Step 2. Divide your content into 4 to 6 chunks. So, chunks serve as a textbook chapter, a handout of information, or an online resource. So, it is important na mo ang i-divide ang topics sa kung pila ang members of members sa group. So, since we have 5 members, let's break the content into 5 chunks. Step 3. Assign 1 chunk of content in each person in a jigsaw group. So, each group is responsible for one chunk of the content. So, like for example, sa gihatag na topic ng makaroon, which is 21st century literary skills and teaching resources. So, there are five components. We have the student-led learning, inquiry-based classroom environment, collaborative activities, HATS activities, and creative learning. So those five content will be assigned one person each. So student one will be the student lead, student two will be the inquiry based classroom environment, and so on. Then that specific person na nakasay na ng atapik is iyahapon ang share, i discuss, or itudlo sa uban grupo. Step four, have student meet in expert group. After each student study his or her topic independently, so katong the same ang topic will gather and share their own thoughts. So, for example, sa group 1 to 5, ang student 1 or na assigned sa student lead is mag-gather and mag-share sila sa ilang ideas or thoughts about an ang topic. In that matter, the gap of students' knowledge will be cleared up and filled. Step 5, student return to their jigsaw group. So, each student takes turn to present their topic. So, if one will discuss, other members should be listened carefully. Take notes and ask a lot of questions after the student done his or her part. After si isa ka member will present, another member of the group will present. Then, step 6. Assess all the students on all the content. So, it can be a basic quiz to ensure that all students got the basic understanding of that particular topic. It is important na ang appeal nga sa quiz is makover ta ng topics nga na-assign sa each students. Kaya para mas magita kung na sabtan bigit sa isa ka asudyante ang kasi-klasing na topic. So, let us now proceed with the specific goals of student-lead learning. So, number one, the students can understand what they are learned in the greatest possible detail. So, with the help of different activities involved in this type of learning, students will be involved with one another to share their different ideas and group together to fill up such gap. Number two, empower our students with their learning and a sense of pride and accomplishment. Number three, allow the teachers see what the students know and don't know. So at the same time, the teacher will serve as the facilitator and guide his or her students as needed. Number four is to improve students' oral communication skills. So with the help again with the different activities, students will develop their interaction with other people and share their own ideas confidently. So, how to create a student-lead classroom? First, asking quality of questions and teaching your students to do that. So, pariya sa kagayin ng example, which is the activity of think, pair, share. So, through questions, ngayon dihan sa teacher is makakama up or makabuild up sila ideas about that particular topic that might answer that specific question. So, this practice encourages critical and creative thinking and enhances problem-solving skills. So, open-ended questioning encourages students clear communication and provides reassurance that their ideas and thoughts matter.
Next is student evaluation of each other. So the teacher will be no longer the only grader. The student will also become responsible for an evaluation piece. Next is student feedback to each other. So it can be during discussion, such as vocabulary and adding details and asking grouping questions. Next is student need discussion, then Socratic seminars. So Socratic seminars, it is a formal discussion based on a text in which the leaders ask open-ended questions. So within the context of the discussion, students listen closely to the comments of other students thinking critically for themselves and the responses of the thoughts of others. Second to the last, we have the structure. A student made classroom has many structures, routines, and procedures that are hidden but essential and they are the foundation. So for example, the students must have a rubrics and models to give quality of feedback to each other. So last one is we have the teacher language. One of it is listen to your colleagues. We honor all voices in here. Talk to each other, not me. Language like this converts students from passive and believers to active owners with their own leadership qualities. So at this moment, you are wondering why, what is inquiry-based learning? Inquiry-based learning emerged in 1960. It is a learning and teaching approach that emphasizes student question, ideas, and observation. It underlines the student role in the learning process. Instructors actively encourage students to share their thoughts and respectfully challenge, test, and redefine ideas. With inquiry-based learning, instructors and students share responsibility to the learning process. So inquiry-based learning refers to the transformation of the traditional classroom. Students are encouraged to take part in the group work to learn from their peers and participate in the form of guided learning, which is delivered by an instructor. This form of learning enhances comprehension rather than memorizing facts and taking notes. Students are now encouraged to discuss their ideas among their peers. This form of learning allows students to take ownership of their learning and increases their engagement with the content. Examples of inquiry-based learning are case studies, group project, research project, field work, especially for science lesson, unique exercises tailored to the student. Marcos Pedastes, a professor of technology education of University of Tartu, and he is doctor in biology and earth science education. He shared his four phases of inquiry. It starts with orientation, followed by conceptualization, then leads to investigation, and then last is the conclusion. So orientation or discovering the problem. In this phase, teacher present the student with a topic. The teacher will provide the foundation of the required to understand the topic and define a problem that needs to be solved. Teachers start an inquiry-based learning session by presenting a topic in an engaging or inspiring way. In this stage, the teacher is the provocator. Their job is to build engagement and excitement and curiosity. An orientation may be a video, presentation from a guest speaker, a book, or sometimes a cartoon article from local newspapers or provocative YouTube video. The key here is to simultaneously motivate the student to learn and to give foundation for a follow-up inquiry. Next to orientation is the conceptualization or finding a research question. In this stage, students come up with a plan for how they might learn more about their topic. Teachers might ask students to come up with a research question and develop an action plan for investigating the question. The central part to this phase is the development of a question or a problem. Without a question, there would be no subsequent inquiry. Once an inquiry question is in place, the teacher should require the student to come up with an action plan to address the question. One common way to do this is to get the student to break up into groups and come up with an action plan. So follow the investigation. Investigation or the collecting evidence and information. So in this phase, students will actively explore the topic through research, experimentation, 
exploration, observation, and data collection. They should also record the data to follow up reflection. The investigation phase should be a student-centered phase in which the student actively seek out answer. Students use the procedure by putting together in phase 2 to conduct their inquiry. The role of the teacher is to facilitate this exploration, gather the required resources, and facilitate the group discussion. And the last phase is the conclusion, analyzing the evidence and making up your mind. Students should look at the data they collected and see what new answers they have. Students should look at the research question they devised in phase 2 and see if they can now answer it. The conclusion phase is an opportunity to reflect on the data collected and analyze it. Students should get together and compare their findings to the research question. This phase may end with presenting a new hypothesis, a statement of belief, or model of explaining a phenomenon. Peter Bachey and Randy Bell define four different types of inquiry that you can view on a spectrum from teacher-centered structure to learner-centered open. First is the confirmation inquiry. Learners are given a question as well as a method to which the end result is already known. The goal is to confirm the result. This enables learners to reinforce already established idea and to practice their investigative skills. So it follows with structured inquiry. Learners are given the question and the method of achieving the result, but the goal is to provide an explanation that is already supported by the evidence gathered during and through investigative process. Next is the guided inquiry. Learners are only given a question. The main goal is to design the method of investigation and then test the question itself. This type of inquiry is not typically as structured as the previous mentioned form. Lastly is the open inquiry. Learners must form their own question, design an investigative method, and then carry out the inquiry itself. They must present the result at the end of the process. Now that we know more about this learning and teaching approach, let's take a look at the advantage and benefits of inquiry-based learning. The first advantage is it enhances learning experience for the children. Sitting in a classroom, taking notes isn't the most effective or fun way to learn. Inquiry-based learning enhances the learning process by letting the student explore the topic themselves. Teaches skills needed for all areas of living. As they explore a topic, students build critical thinking and communication skills. Cognitive skills that students develop can be used to improve comprehension in every subject as well as in day-to-day -day life. Another one is foster curiosity in the student. An inquiry-based learning approach lets students share their own ideas and questions about a topic. This helps foster more curiosity about the materials and teaches skills students can use to continue exploring topics they are interested in. So it deepens student understanding of topics. Rather than simply memorizing facts, students make their own connection about what they are learning. This allows them to gain a better understanding of a topic than they will get by just memorizing and recalling facts. Another benefit is allow students to take ownership of their learning. Students have the opportunity to explore a topic giving them more of sense of ownership over their learning. Instead of the teacher telling them what they should know, students are able to learn in a way that works for them. It increases engagement with the learning. So it increases engagement with the materials. As a form of active learning, this approach encourages students to fully engage in the learning process by allowing students to explore topics, make their own connection, ask questions, they are able to learn more effectively. Another one is it creates a love of learning. Inquiry-based learning is designed to teach students a love of learning. When students are able to engage with the material in their own way, not only they are able to gain a deeper understanding, they are able to develop a passion for exploration and learning.
So it is important to remember that inquiry-based learning is not a technique or a practice, but a process that has a potential to increase the intellectual engagement and deep understanding of learning. Mm -hmm.